Nico Lelos went absolutely off in week two of the preseason, racking up three sacks, five tackles, a pass deflection, and three quarterback hits. Lelos entered the NFL as an undrafted rookie in 2020 and has only played in six games so far in his NFL career, but he got some experience this year that helped his growth in the XFL. Lelos entered last season on the Saints practice squad, then went to the XFL, replayed for the Seattle Sea Dragons, and was one of the top defensive ends in the league. Now he's back with the Saints competing for a roster spot. If he wants to earn a roster spot, big performances like this are his best shot at it. Quote, he's a guy that's worked extremely hard, head coach Zach Allen said of Lelos. He was on the practice squad last year. He went and played in the XFL this year. I think that was good experience for him to get out there and play. He's been putting some good stuff on tape. It's a position that we're really deep at, so there's a lot of competition there. We'll evaluate where the tape was, but he did do some good things tonight. And quote, the XFL and USFL haven't developed big fan bases, but spring football does have the potential to be valuable to the NFL in the way it develops players. On the other hand, linebacker Jalen Smith had a good game. He immediately made an impact in the run defense and later on broke up a pass down on the sideline to deny a third down conversion. Smith is the real deal and brings great depth next to Demario Davis and Pete Werner. A big takeaway from the game was the Saints' ability to force turnovers. The defense came through in several big moments like when defensive lineman Peyton Turner and Brian Brzee teamed up on a sack fumble recovery, while defensive backs Isaac Yidiam and Lonnie Johnson Jr. both intercepted Chargers quarterback Easton stick. Kendra Miller had a much better game than in his debut versus Kansas City. Miller did have 23 yards on 10 carries, which isn't exactly ideal, but he scored his first career touchdown run and caught all three of his targets for another 36 yards, showing that his hard work this offseason has been paying off. It's a very encouraging step forward for the rookie running back, especially considering that Alvin Kamara is going to miss three games due to suspension, and Miller is going to get an expanded workload. You just love to see that out of the rookie. With that being said, it is the preseason. We can't take too much away from it. But the overall outlook for the Saints is interesting because if you look at 2020, they were a top five scoring offense, and then they plummeted to 19th over the past two years due to not being able to find an answer at quarterback. Taysom Hill, Andy Dalton, and Jameis Winston. Despite that being the trio of quarterbacks last season, the Saints won seven games. They lost another five by one score. And Derek Carr, he's a four-time Pro Bowler. He's helped the Raiders make the playoffs twice, and that's with them having some of the worst defenses consistently year after year in the league. And Carr, in his career, 64.6% completion of his passes. He's thrown for over 35,000 yards, 217 touchdowns with 99 interceptions. He's going to be in a much more creative and explosive offense under Dennis Allen. I mean, these guys have history, right, with the Raiders, and that's why Allen brought him in. He's the head coach, and he got to pick his quarterback. He went with Derek Carr. I love the fit. I love the weapons for the Saints. I love the defense. It is one of maybe even the oldest defenses in football. Yeah, I mean, last year, the Saints had five defensive players, 30 or older, starting at least 10 games, which matched the most in the league. Despite that, the Saints held its final eight opponents, all to 20 points or fewer to close out the season, but it didn't always translate to victory. Three times in that span, the Saints gave up 17 points or fewer and still lost. That hadn't happened to New Orleans once in nearly four years. Look at the Saints' start of the year. They are facing young quarterback after young quarterback bryce young cj stroud anthony richardson jordan love and of course not all in a row but that's four quarterbacks right there that essentially have one or fewer start in the league and that's huge for the saints they might win all of those games talking about this draft class unreal i mean brian brzee isaiah foskey kendra miller nick saldaveri jake hayner jordan howden at perry there is a lot of young talent that's going to be able to make an immediate impact for the Saints. Let's talk about Michael Thomas. Of course, he set an NFL record in 2019 with 149 receptions. That still stands. His 1,725 receiving yards that season led the NFL, and he was the league's offensive player of the year. From 2016 to 2019, Thomas was on the trajectory of a Hall of Fame career. However, everything changed in 2020 when he suffered a high ankle sprain and played in just seven games. Thomas did not have ankle surgery until long after the season. He missed all of 2021. He tried to come back in 2022, but he injured his foot and played in only three games, and the Saints fell to 7-10 under first-year coach Dennis Allen. Rookies Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid, who actually was undrafted, are great downfield threats, but Thomas is exactly what is needed next to them as a receiver who can make contested catches and dominate underneath. For example, Olave wasn't very effective on contested catches as he caught 8 of 24 contested targets and he only averaged 3 yards after catch per reception. 
Thomas will be Carr's go-to option on third down and in the red zone. Quote, I know the type of player I'm capable of being, Thomas said. I'm staying ready so I don't have to get ready. He won't beat you with speed, but rather his route physicality and quick feet. This allows him to consistently separate. With that being said, we have to talk about Chris Olave. He made a strong case for Offensive Rookie of the Year when he had the fifth most yards per route run by a rookie wide receiver over the last 10 years. Not only is Olave's yards per target run elite by rookie standards, but it was also one of the best in the league ranking 10th overall. The Saints had very high expectations for Olave after trading up to get him in the 2022 draft. Olave ended his strong rookie season 8th in total air yards while commanding a 25% target share and 10th ranked air yard share. Olave had the second best rookie receiving output in franchise history, surpassing the great Marquez Colston to total 72 receptions for 1,042 receiving yards with 4 touchdown catches and 48 first down conversions. Only Michael Thomas beat those numbers. On a per game basis, Olave averaged 4.8 receptions and 69.5 yards per outing, which are both well above average. This offense has the potential to be top five in the league. You also can't forget how the offensive line was banged up in 2022. So Alvin Kamara ended up being suspended for three games, which prompted in the offseason for the Saints to sign Jamal Williams to a three-year deal worth 12 million, including 8 million fully guaranteed. In four years with the Packers, Williams rushed for 1,985 yards and 10 touchdowns while averaging four yards per carry. He also caught another 122 passes for 961 yards and eight touchdowns. But for Williams, of course, in the 2022 season, he absolutely broke out. He led the NFL with 17 rushing touchdowns, recorded two 100-yard games, and had six more outings of at least 60 yards. He finished with a career-high 1,066 yards overall on the ground. And looking at Kamara, for his standards, he did disappoint. He rushed for only 897 yards and two touchdowns, but he caught two more touchdowns through the air, including 490 yards on 57 catches. That's a top 10 season, so let's talk about the schedule. The Saints will get a true home opener for the first time since the 2019 season, as no fans were allowed at the 2020 home opener due to COVID-19 restrictions in the 2021 opener against the Green Bay Packers, which was moved to Jacksonville due to, of course, the hurricane at the time. That means fans won't have to wait long to see Derek Carr and Michael Thomas. The Saints aren't racking up the miles they were in 2022, which involved multiple West Coast trips in a week in London, but their 2023 schedule is still tricky for how some of their road games are spread out, an away game against the Panthers on a Monday night followed by a trip to Green Bay on a short week could prove tough. And there's also a trip to Los Angeles on a short week late in the season. The Saints also have back-to-back -back road games three times on the schedule. Although the road games could prove difficult, the Saints have some time to breathe in the later part of the schedule as they will have three straight home games for their trip to play the rams saints last season were two and four in the division which will certainly not happen again 